All right, we're going to be talking some introductory statistics today. So you're going to be learning about some very basic terms, including what a statistic is. You signed up for the course. Chances are if someone asks you what's a statistic, you might not have a great answer for them, and that's okay. Today we're going to go over that, go over all the basic terms so you can know all the basic stuff that goes into a statistical study and why we use statistics. That's important too. Why on earth do they exist? First of all, you always start out with what's called a population of interest. That's who or what you want to know about. Like, say you had a case of you wanted to figure out um, the number of Apple pro no, average number of Apple products owned by an individual in Massachusetts, right? So you figure, okay, that's your population of interest, all the people in Massachusetts. Or maybe you want to narrow it down to an age range. Maybe you want to say everyone above 18. What's the average number of Apple products owned by someone above the age of 18 in Massachusetts? All the people in Massachusetts would be your population of interest in that case. Who are you interested in? What are you interested in? Now, you have two options once you have that population of interest in trying to answer your question. You can do two things. First thing you can do is you can perform a census. You might have heard about this. Every, it seems like every few years, the United States is doing a census, and they're trying to figure out you know, all the people in the United States. They're trying to reach out to every single person. That's what a census is. When you ask everyone in your population, sometimes performing a census is easy. Like if you wanted to figure out how many people in your family or uh, want to eat Chinese food or like Chinese food, then you just ask everybody in your family or what kind of pizza they like. Ask everyone in your family. Your family is very easy to perform a census in. Maybe you wanted to figure out the average number of Apple products for your family. That would be a case where a census would come into play. That is really easy to do. You just ask everybody. Now, unfortunately, more often than not, you can't ask everybody. Maybe the population's too big. Maybe it's just, maybe it's not even so much that it's big. It's just really hard to get a hold of. If that's the case, what you want to get is a sample. What is a sample? It is a subset of your population. So let's go back to, you know, average number of Apple products owned by a Massachusetts resident above the age of 18, right? Can't ask everybody in the entire state of Massachusetts. We don't have the time. We don't have the resources. Can't happen. So we can't do a census. If that's the case, then you do a sample, which means you don't ask everybody. You just ask a small group of people. Now, ideally, what you want that sample to look like, you want your sample to be like a snapshot of your population. It should look something like that. And good samples, good samples are always random. We want it to be random. Why? Because when it's random, you have a much better chance of getting something that looks just like your population. Whereas if you just say, okay, um, I'm going to go to everybody around me who lives in Massachusetts. Like, I know 30 people around me. I'm going to ask them, and then I'm going to apply that to the entire state of Massachusetts. Might not work. Because the people all around you might not necessarily represent everything we have in Massachusetts. You want a sample to be random because when you do that, you get something that kind of looks like that picture. So you have these two options. You have your population of interest. You can either ask everybody or you can ask a small group of people. So in this case, let's start with our census. All right, so say we have the ability to ask everybody. What you do, collect data. Collect data from everybody, right? You get that information from them. So you're able to ask everybody in the entire state of Massachusetts. For some reason you get these resources and you say, okay, how many Apple products do you own? And then you just write down the data. Maybe some people say two, zero, four, six, something like that. If that's the case, this is your data. Now guess what? If you do a sample, same thing. You're gonna collect data. So nothing's really changing right here. The only thing is if you're doing a sample, you're gonna get less data because you're asking less people. So you're not going to have as much data. But what you're going to learn throughout this course is that you can take the data you get from a sample and you can generalize it to your population. You can make an inference and you can make a conclusion based on that. So you get to these two points, right? All right, so you've done your census. You've collected all the data from your census. Now what you want to do is you want to summarize that data. What you want from that is a parameter. 
Oh, uh, small misspelling here, that's okay. It's a parameter. And what that is, is it's a summary of your population. There are a lot of ways you can summarize your population. There are a lot of numerical summaries you can use. Chances are you've learned some of these throughout your school. Maybe you've heard of mean, the mode, the median, the range. These are all examples of a summary. They're, it's a numerical summary. You take all that data and then you come up with one number to describe it. Whether it's the average or your mean. Maybe it's the mode, the one that occurs the most. Maybe it's the median, the one that falls right in the middle. Or maybe it's the range, just the wide range. You know, like maybe 0 to 12 products. Okay. So you have a census where you can collect your data and then you get a parameter. And that's a summary of your population. Notice that parameter, population, both begin with P. That's not a coincidence. It's a nice, easy way to remember it. Parameter goes with the population. Now you have a sample. Say we weren't able to get that census we were talking about. You did a nice random sample. You randomly asked people in Massachusetts, you got some data. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna summarize that data in some way, shape or form. When you summarize that data, that's when you get a statistic. And much like a parameter, a statistic is, it's a summary. It's a numerical summary. But in this case, instead of your population, it's sample. Notice how statistic and sample both begin with an S. It's a nice, easy way to remember that. So when you have a population of interest and you can ask everyone in your population, collect that data, summarize it, and you make a parameter. Now, if you can't ask everybody, then you ask a small group. And when you get that small group, again, you want that group to be random, collect the data from that group, and then you summarize it. You come up with some sort of statistical or numerical summary, and you get a statistic. Statistic as sample. So it's nice and easy to remember. A parameter goes with the whole population. Statistic summarizes a sample. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a situation where we're going to plan something out where we're going to have a population of interest and then we're going to go with whether it's better to go with a census or a sample and then what it might look like. So we're going to erase all this. So let's say you want to find the average screen time of students in your English class. All right, so that's what you want to find out for one reason or another. Okay, so population of interest, right? That's going to be your English class. Now, in this case, you're looking at a pretty small population. Maybe you have an English class that only has 20 people in it. That's a small population. Since that's such a small population, I'm going to even put that small population, it's very easy to ask everybody. And if you can ask everybody, you perform a census. In that census, you collect data. You get all these times, right? Like maybe you get um, 62 minutes, 85 minutes, 147 minutes. This is all data. That's what you would record. That would be your data. So then maybe someone says, all right, what do you got? And then instead of just listing all these, right, like the screen times, you can just say, if someone says, okay, well, what do you got? 62, 85, 147, and then you just keep rattling on numbers. That doesn't, that can't be too helpful sometimes. So what you want to do is you want to summarize it. And how are we going to summarize it? Well, let's see. Since we did a census, right? We were able to ask everybody in the class. We want to summarize it. That's when you are going to have a parameter. Parameter? for our whole population.
summarizes our whole population. You can just take all these numbers, like maybe you have 20 people in your class, get those 20 numbers together, and you can come up with an average screen time of students in your English class. You might even come up with like maybe the mode, the median, those are all examples of parameters. Again, because they're summarizing a very small population, you're able to perform a census. Now, let's take it a step further. Say you want to go beyond your English class, right? And we'll even get rid of average up here. We'll just talk about screen time in general. So you want to figure out the screen time of students in your, maybe not just English class, maybe in the school. Well, depending on how big your school is, that might be possible. But say, we're going to say your sample, well, we'll say your population is... 947 students. Maybe you want to ask all 947 students. You can do that, but then you run into issues. How I track down all 947 students. What if kids are absent the day I'm trying to perform a census? What if, you know, again, maybe you can't find people. Maybe, you know, you go to classes, ask everyone in class, but maybe some kids aren't in class that day. Maybe they're on a field trip. 947 is a pretty big group. It might not be easy for you to perform a census here. So I'm going to put large population. It's a pretty large population, I would say. So since it's a large population, you can't necessarily do a census in this case. What we're going to do is we're going to do a sample. So instead of the 947 students, what you could do is say... We randomly select, we'll say 90. And how you randomly select them, you're going to learn all sorts of different ways you can randomly select them. There are so many different options here. You can go with what's called a simple random sample, you can go with stratified, cluster. You have a lot of different samples that you can perform that are random. But you decide you're going to go with the random sample, okay. So then again, collect data. Collecting data is good. In this case, you're going to get 90 numbers. Okay. 90 numbers is easier to deal with than 947. Now, in the process of doing this random sample, right, what your hope is is that you're going to get a pretty diverse group here. If you're doing it randomly, you shouldn't be getting too many seniors and then too little freshmen. You should be getting it pretty spread out so that everyone's equally represented. Not just classes, maybe by gender, maybe by... Um, you know, interests, maybe some people more interested in, uh, you know, digital technology than others. So you're going to get, hopefully by doing that random sample, if it's really random, you're going to get a really good picture of what your population could be. You're going to get some of this, some of that, some of this, some of that. So it's basically like a small picture of what the whole population looks like. So you collect all that data, you get those 90 pieces of information. Instead of just delivering 90 pieces of information, all those little pieces of data, what you want to do is summarize it. So yeah, summarize your data. And since you did a sample here, you are going to get a statistic. Maybe you're going to report back what the average screen time is. Maybe you're going to report back what the median screen time is. Maybe what the mode screen time is. Maybe what the range is. Those are all statistics because they're summaries of your sample. So this is some of the basic introductory vocabulary you want to know going into a statistics course. That a statistic summarizes a sample, right? And we perform samples when we can't perform a census because a census is when you ask everybody. And if your population of interest is too big, then you can't do a census. That's when you perform a sample, small group, get information, summarize that small group, you get a statistic. And eventually in this course, you're going to learn how you can take that statistic and you can generalize it to an entire population. So you can come pretty close to what the average screen time is or maybe the median screen time is for your entire school just by asking 90 people out of that 947. Eventually you're going to learn that. But again, those are all your basic terms to kind of start out with. Hopefully this helps you out getting, getting started.